Wow, Alex, you're very prompt. Your promptness is quite incredible. How are you doing? Uh, so today I'm working on, um, I'm working on making, so I want to have like a, a team playbook. So you'll get to pick stuff about your character and then like everyone collectively um, is going to pick like a team playbook, which is kind of akin to like a setting kind of handout or something like that. Uh, I was a little bit late getting started because I was, I was having dinner with my dad and we started talking about various dark topics but here I am so uh, the team playbook which is gonna be like the easiest way to describe it would be like so we're playing Sailor Moon today or we're playing Steven Universe today or we're playing um, you know Utena or whatever else you know like what kind of magical girl thing are we doing um, and so it includes some implied kind of broader setting stuff, um, like some details about like what our obligations kind of look like, as well as of course like, you know, what kind of superhero team are we? Uh, that's a big part of it. So um, stuff like your origin, your choose your origin, roles, obligations. Um, you know, and, and more, there'll be more stuff, which I'm going to kind of muddle through today. Um, so, um, what I want to do today is just have one that I can give for the play test and it's going to be the like Sailor Moon one. Um, and so this one I want to call the like celestial like court or kingdom one. Um, I suppose I should write that down somewhere. Um, and this is going to be like, you know, Gonna, the main emphasis here is to have a bunch of like prompts for people. Um, so let me just find my like previous stuff and then overwrite it. So let's just replace this all. Sure. So instead of names, it's gonna be origin. Um, and if y'all have like prompts that you think are appropriate for our like Sailor Moon esque thing, uh, you know, throw them out at me. That's all super helpful. But um, you know, what I'm thinking in terms of origin is like a kind of two word summary of like what your deal is. So in this case, it could be like deposed. Yeah, we'll go with like ancient magical kingdom um, I was like thinking of these before going to sleep last night and I should have fucking written them down because I had a whole bunch that were good um, uh, I want to do the one where it's like you are the reincarnation of reincarnation of stellar royalty interstellar royalty and then so the idea is we have like the origin which is kind of like the whole team's kind of quick description and then we're going to do a um, a role and so role can be stuff like um, royal family member 
uh, loyal knight um, suitor slash lover. Um, advisor, stuff like this, right? So like, you know, examples like the royal family member would obviously be Sailor Moon. She's the like moon princess, right? Um, and then we have stuff like loyal knight could be like, you know, uh, like Sailor Jupiter or whatever could be a loyal knight. Um, but then we can also like color this however we want. So the idea is to have these kind of like inspiring little tidbits for people to pick from. Um, high priest. Uh, just, you know, like a selection of tropes, essentially. Um, rival. Forgotten daughter. Rotten child. What was Saturn's whole deal? I feel like she was pretty... My memory of her is like, there's not really like an extreme characterization, except that she was like, tough. Um, whereas like with Sailor Mars, she was like, kind of antagonistic and fiery. Um, taboo psychopomp. Wait, I'm, I'm thinking of Jupiter, not Saturn. I always fuck this up. Um, and like, so this playbook is very much the like core, like season one Sailor Moon kind of stuff where it's like the really, the most kind of fundamental. Um, the one where we get into like, you know, like Saturn who's a robot or like part robot, who knows? You know, like stuff like that. Uh, the like, we're reaching far to get a character kind of stuff i want to keep out of uh this particular team playbook this is the like vanilla one so this would be like sailor moon mercury mars jupiter venus right like those five characters the advisor we could think of as like luna is a good example right like some kind of supporting character which like whether or not you would want to play luna as your pc in this game wholly different question but Yeah, so Alex, you're in you're in like the perfect position to talk to like speak to this, right? Of like what are the things we need to give? So the like suitor slash lover, you know, is tuxedo mask, um, slash Darian. Um, the high priest, I'm thinking, you know, Mars is you know, in addition to being a like fiery rival character, is also a like, you know, character with a bunch of religious symbol symbolism associated with them or like temple symbolism. Um, and like these could be picked multiple times or picked in combination. So it's like, cool, I am a royal family member. And someone's like, cool, I'm also a royal family member. It's cool, I wanna be a princess. Okay, well, I'm gonna be your daughter from the future that you don't remember. Uh, so I'm a royal family member and a forgotten child. Or, you know, I wanna be a loyal knight who is in love with the, you know, one of the main characters, one of the other characters, whatever. These are all like, bits that you can combine together like i want to be the high priest and i want to be a, a kind of antagonistic rival kind of figure um i think there's totally room to have tuxedo mask as a pc um he's just like it, he's still working as part of the team um but just in a kind of like in a way that the audience knows but the characters don't um and i think there's there's room for that um you know, when he becomes one of the baddies, spoilers, sorry, um, that would fall under, like, I want to have my rules for, like, when you die, like, when you run out of hit points, that you basically end up going through, like, a tuxedo mask story arc. Some kind of, like, jester type. I mean, I, this is the thing, too, is we want to, we want to, like, distill the whole like sailor moon concept and then branch back out so like offer some potential new stuff so the idea of like yeah like a court jester type figure or like a trickster i mean a court jester would be like a kind of trickster -y kind of character i feel like
I mean, Venus hilariously is the like the hero that would have been. Like she was actually the protagonist of her own thing before Sailor Moon was a thing. Um she's like the proto Sailor Moon and then she's kind of kept as, the, as this like she's kind of like an ideal protagonist and then um Sailor Moon herself is kind of a like as a more humble protagonist. And yeah, I would love to have that character potential exist. I mean, like so there's some stuff that we want to be able to Okay. So your your role that you're choosing for yourself from this sheet um, is not 100% of your character concept. It's like a facet of your character concept. So it's like you can pick like one or two tags, and then you're going to append those onto your playbook where you decide a bunch of stuff about your character. And, you know, Venus would be a character with the high, like, grace and who's working in that kind of space. Um, but, like, too perfect like model citizen kind of space and so you could play a character who is that and is some other things right so she can be the like loyal knight which i think she is pretty expressly in that kind of category of like i am straightforwardly helpful and that kind of stuff but then i'm also this like too perfect person that you kind of wish you were the like princess figure wishes she was yeah, exactly, Alex. I can't I can't shelter you from these spoilers. The spoilers run too deep. Um So So yeah, there's room for these to not be these aren't your complete character. These are just like you know, a facet and a potentially like largely forgotten facet of your character because it could be like in Sailor Moon, right? Like the characters don't really know that this is who they are or they're very like or they could be very aware, or like everyone could be aware of to be like, oh, you're from the like royal family of whatever. Court gesture, lowly servant. Does lowly servants make great heroes? Um, just gonna do a little bit of text editing. I think this is ten. Is this another one? No, eleven point. And then this one wants to be in the center. Choose your role. Choose your origin. So we need to flesh out origins a little more. Um, I feel like a traitor could exist in the like rival space. Um, I don't want to get like too deep into the minutia, but I think this is like a decent spread of prompts. There will be other playbooks that will have like a you know like chosen hero etc kind of thing but with this one we're sticking to the very much like sailor moon thing which is like sailor moon isn't a hero exactly she's just the princess and like has some responsibilities but it's not the like you're hercules or you're the chosen one or whatever but yeah like i totally want to have a set that's like oh yeah you're like the the like ang of your setting you're the like keeper of balance and then you have this like cast of supporting people like absolutely an archetype that we want to pursue the like chosen hero thing in a different book yeah exactly Mox Vienna and Mox Vienna and the idea would be that like you know this is a place for people to insert their own content right like just like with playbooks you can make your own team book so choose your origins your origin roles and obligations so let's just delete this text here Mer obligation school I'll write high school specifically. High school. Um, what are some other good obligations for this kind of framework? Like day job. Um, I'm thinking like temple like you're all you all are like 
monks slash nuns, whatever, monks at a temple, um, royal court. Because like it could be that this is like a literal thing, and I'm fine for the setting to like drift in terms of time um, within these playbooks. So it could be that you're doing like a Renaissance thing where you're in like Vienna and you know it, like some of you are the members are like literal members of a royal family or you like work in the castle and you're the moon princess but then the actual princess is like actually in the role of like loyal knight to you when you're all magical but then you have these different obligations that you're in see you Caterais. thanks for tuning in um and so yeah this is to give us some sense of like when we say we have like an obligations phase this is what we're fulfilling right so high school the obvious you know vanilla option um but let's give it a few others um i just need like one or two more and i would be happy um And like this doesn't have to be something that everyone does together, although I think it works best if it's everyone together. So like with day job, it's like a couple of you are coworkers and someone works in like an affiliated thing or like is a delivery person who you like meet at work regularly. Like there's a chance for overlap because um, that's the main thing is being able to like share uh, scenes during obligation stuff. Um, high school is the easiest one. You're like all in the same class. It's no problem. Uh, but surely there must be some other fun settings that we can put the characters into. So, um, I mean, university, if I'm specifying high school specifically, I think it's worth saying university as well. Um, boarding school. And like, maybe I don't need to be that specific, but I think providing these prompts is helpful and you know, it's not like it costs me much to include. Band camp. Camp. Camp is excellent. I don't know if I want to be so specific as band camp, but at, you're at some kind of like, yeah, summer camp or something. Uh, we're consider we're assuming that the characters lead more or less relatable human lives. So that even if it's not Earth, that they have like a school. You can still go to high school, wherever this is that you're at. You know, if you're on, you know, Alpha Centauri or whatever. Um, and there will be others that are more like sci-fi leaning. This one is a little bit more fantasy leaning. I'll put summer camp because I feel like that is probably... And like camp kind of exists on the outer edge of what we want to do. Um, this idea of like community or family, I think family is an interesting one. So you have some kind of like, all of you collectively have these like family obligations, which I don't know exactly what that would look like, but someone can maybe piece that together in an interesting way. Um, certainly that could make a lot of sense if it was like, again, like mashing like royal court kind of stuff together colonists on a moon base I mean I definitely want a playbook to kind of occupy that stuff oh yeah totally training yeah training the whole idea of like training is great like you're at the kung fu temple or whatever super into it um and so like again this is a list where we can like pick one or two and like color it and figure it out these prompts exist not to like narrow our space but to give us some launching points for coming up with stuff so i think this is a good range of obligations um i want to get a couple more origins in here so like ancient magical kingdom reincarnation of interstellar royalty which like sailor moon is kind of both of those things um I want to do like a hidden, hidden magical kingdom. Parallel timeline. 
Uh, what else is fun? I like fairy world shit. Um, but how would I describe that? I think hidden, hidden magical kingdom can cover any kind of like fairy stuff. Community service. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be funny. I mean, that could fall under summer camp. I mean, the whole idea, right, with obligations is that you're like a big part of your mundane identity uh, and that it be. I'm putting this here because I want the players to think of it communally. Um, but yeah, for like origin as well, it's nice to have everyone kind of settle on one so that our uh, like superhero stuff is cohesive. Exactly, we have like ancient mag magical kingdom versus hidden magical kingdom. These are like different color on the same idea, but um, yeah, maybe we have enough. Maybe we need one more. I don't know. If something good comes to me, we'll do it. Um, so other stuff I want to put in this playbook is like the uh, like what our transformations and stuff look like. Um, here we go. So this is this. Oh god, the dense I'm spelling. Did I spell transcendence correctly? I don't give a crap. I wrote it. It's done. I did it. So costume changes. Um, so we want to talk about here. We want to talk about all the like, kind of like, crap that comes along with you know like, costume changes, transformation sequences, sequences, um, magical jewelry. Right, I spelled it with dance, which is incorrect. Transcendence. Huh. We made it. We got through it. Spelled transcendence. <laughs> Language belongs to its speakers. I'm speaking it into letters on the page here with my hands. Magical jewelry? Oh my gosh. Let's just not focus on how embarrassingly poorly I type. Um... Okay, so like, what's the key stuff with Sailor Moon? She has like, I remember at one point there's like a locket or something. Um, there's definitely like a whole transformation, you know, montage that happens. Um, oh yeah, calling on ancient powers. Um, calling on the stars slash planets. Um, and it's like I keep having ideas and then forgetting about them as I'm writing stuff down. Um, well, let's, oops, can't use that hockey while I'm typing. Let's look at some of our, like, origins and stuff for, for some clues as to what we can put in here. So, they're not actually that helpful. Physical transformation, yeah. Magical weapons, slash armor. Oh, yeah, gender change should be an option. You know, I feel like I actually detailed a bunch of this crap on my other character sheet. So let's have a look in here. Yeah, transformation costumes, special tools or armaments, calling on ancient powers. Yeah, so there's like a small, there's a small bit of prompts, which I actually want to remove because I want this to just be like, write down some stuff based on what, you know, this is like here because you're going to be pulling it from the other sheet. Um, but we just want a place for you to write it on your character sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Tower of the Elements, which could be like classic Earth, Wind, and Fire stuff, or it could be this whole other thing that they come up with. Um, any memories from past selves? So like you like embody this past self. That kind of stuff could be cool. Kind of a stylistic thing here, but I think I actually, do I want to separate these with dashes? I feel like dashes are nice because then I can use commas as an element of grammar if I need to. I'm like the style and presentation of the uh, character sheets or playbooks rather are going to be all over the place because I'm just going to be forgetting what my standards are and whatnot. Um, transcendence. I did it. Okay, and then it's gonna have some like, some crunchy bits, um, which would be stuff like the, um, stuff like the investigation track, um, selenium, silver, and iodine. You know, whatever, like Sailor Moon was pretty fucking weird. They had all the villains named after like, weird crystals, like Zoisite. What the F even is a zoisite? You know what I mean? What is that? Oh, I left Apocalypse World open. I should close that. Um, so we're gonna have some like crunching mechanical bits in the middle section. So I'm actually gonna steal. Um, see, I was really organized with this PDF. Everything's by the page. Super helpful. Um, I'm just going to take all of my graphics stuff from this one. And oh, is it going to let me do that? All right, we're going to duplicate these. We're going to merge them. We're going to copy the whole thing. And then we're just going to make a new layer and paste. Boom. I've successfully used Photoshop. Um, and I just want these because I'm going to be like filling in some stuff. So, hmm. All right. Uh, let's get in here and edit this thing. So, we're going to take some random boxes. Investigation track. Just hacking this thing together. on the other side there. Um, and this is going to be investigation. So there's going to be progress track, um, 
but then I also want to have a section for uh, notes, like little tags or whatever. So we'll have a couple lines, and I'm kind of just mocking things up for now. Yeah, it can be really frustrating when you're trying to like do very specific stuff and it doesn't feel like the application is cooperating with you. And mostly it just takes practice. Endless fucking practice. What am I moving around? So and we'll just scale this up, bigger, more significant investigation. So we've got progress track. And then we're going to have notes. We'll call them insights. No, we won't, because that is the name of the stat. We will call this investigation notes. Let's fuck it. Who needs to be creative with names for stuff yet at this point? Um, and what I want to do with this is. Or, whoops, let's just dupe this, scroll it over. Place this a little higher up. We want to keep things aligned in some kind of sensible way. There we go. So everyone can contribute to the investigation, which is like a shared pool of resources. And after a certain point, you're done and you go fight the monsters. Uh, and the investigation notes would be where you could record like weaknesses and stuff that you've found for the monsters. Yeah, it's not it's not the ideal application for what I'm doing, but it's what I've got. So we're making it work. <laughs> I just have I just save everything all the time. I've been trained not to let crashing be an issue for me but it is forever something we must wrestle with. Okay, so then here I'm just gonna yank all of this and put it on a different layer. Um, we'll put it over here. I'm not sure how much other stuff I need on this sheet right now. Um, I'm kind of thinking there will be some like moves and stuff that we can pull from here. Um, I mean, they'll, it'll probably not be the full size sheet. It'll be like a different scale. Um, but the basic idea is to give the players like some kind of framework for the team. I don't know. What strikes y'all as like things we would want to be able to say about our magical girl hero team? Um, that is not currently available to us. Because we want to be able to say, okay, so like who, who we are, like why we are magical, um, how each of us fit into that framework. So like, you know, who's the chief wizard of Magic Town? Um, we need to know what our collective obligations are in order to play the game. Um, would it be cool to have some kind of like shared space? Um, 
yeah, Sith Master, I'm thinking I'm going to have some, like, there are going to be some moves on this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what those are going to look like yet, but there will be some stuff, some stuff that lives here. It might be some of the battle moves live here. Shit like that. Just to, I mean, it might even make sense to put some stuff here just to, like, delineate it as being a, about the magical, you know, whatnot. What's the core of this team's idea? I mean, maybe what we put here is what we're fighting. Maybe we put what we're fighting here. Um, because who knows better than us what's going to like scare us and be bad. So yeah, let's put what we're fighting. Um, the darkness. We face. Um, and I see this as being akin to. Let me pull it up here. Um, there's some great stuff for this in the extended playbooks. Is this showing up? Yeah. All right. So um, the child thing has some stuff that is stolen from the. Solace, um, which is the wolves of the maelstrom. The wolves are hunting you. The maelstrom's wolves are hunting you. So under their disguises, they look like, and you choose a thing that they look like, and then two like perversions of it. And then there's some, you know, tell the MC that they're perversions of birth. She'll know what you mean. Um, this is a great little piece of character sheet, right? This is like arm the MC with ways to fuck with you. P.S. You have to fill it out. Very important. Very, very important. Um, and so I want to gleefully steal this for my own game. So that's what I'm going to do. Um... So what are the things we need to say? So we don't have the maelstrom in the same way, right? We can't just be like the wolves of the maelstrom are hunting you. Like there's, there's a bad thing. We want to be able to be a little more specific about what our bad thing is. Um, so we want our, our like bad thing origin. Um, So I feel like we want kind of two categories here. We want an origin for it, and then we want like what it looks like um, in some more like specific way. So like how it manifests. Um, yeah, visit it forty five. That's kind of the idea is to be like y'all have. So when we pick our like our transcendence, right? Like how we turn into heroes. Um, we all kind of have to agree on it. So it'll be like, oh yeah, we all have like magical jewelry. So we all have this like locket that contains our power and that it manifests out of. And we, you know, and then we draw our magic weapons out of our locket or we, um, we all have past selves who were heroes. We're like chosen heroes of yore. And so like, you know, it could be anything it could be like, yeah, so we're all the reincarnations of an, of interstellar royalty who are like, you know, Space King Arthur and Space King Arthur's knights, only its queen, whatever, and her, like, knights. Uh, and so we're all reincarnations of those. And so I, like, draw on the memory of my reincarnated self, and we all do this. And, like, oh, I'm I'm the, like, queen person, and I'm the reincarnation of their, like, w court wizard or whatever. Um, I'm realizing that instead of high priest, I could put in like mystic or something, whatever. Anyways. Uh, so the idea is that we're all going to create um, together what our like, t how our team functions at, at that level. And then we can go into like color within that, but we're creating a framework uh, as the players. Um, and I'm down with like the MC having some input in all of this as well. But this is like world building that the players carry out, and then the MC gets to like get their fingerprints all over it later. Um. So here, we're talking about we're talking about the darkness, 
Um, and so this is like a larger heading. And then within this, I want to have some stuff. So what I'm going to do is go boop. Uh, and this wants to be bigger. This wants to be like a 14. Um, and I need to do a little bit of reorganizing of all the text. So just bear with me a second here. Basically, it's going to be to take everything and move it down. Oops. Um, so this whole bit with the Celestial Kingdom, this is like our big heading. So it's going to be big. It's going to be like an 18. The Celestial Kingdom. Great. Because uh, I don't have a front page yet. Um, this is going to be like a 14. And then these two need to move up a little bit. As does this one. Oop. And then, boom, move this up here. So choose their origin manifestations and nature. Also, I'm an Oxford comma kind of person, so we're, we're, we're putting in the Oxford commas. Um, so the baddies in Sailor Moon are trying to like supplant the like moon crystal power essentially. They're trying to like steal it for themselves. Uh, and yeah, they're all like interstellar space badness in a, in a like a very generic kind of way. Uh, especially as the series goes on, it's like they're fighting more and more fundamental manifestations of evil. Um, I want to steer away from that kind of stuff where it's just like, this is just the big evil thing. I want to have like more human uh, evil stuff. Um, so more more queen barrels and less whatever else. Um, and even like better yet, queen barrels underlings to me are very interesting. Um, whereas the like great big evil um, is never something I want people to fight directly. Uh, Visitant 45, absolutely. Captain Planet totally fits within this like paradigm, right? It's not at all different. And I'm sure whoever made it was just like, oh, Sailor Moon's pretty cool, because like, you know, most American cartoons are just ripped off of Japanese ones. You know, like The Lion King, stuff like that. Um no 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 no. The den, their homeroom. Um Yeah, like I think I want to include a thing here where like the heroes have like a space they have like a clubhouse or something but we'll come back we'll circle back around for that um clubhouse this will be a note to myself to fill in that Please tell me what it looks like at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and midnight. It's just the world unraveling. I mean, that's kind of the implication. Uh, Fake Alex Blue, there is a... There's an anime with lions in it that is the story. Yeah, Kimba. It's just like straight up that it is the Lion King, 100%. Um... Brylots, that is incredible. <laughs> like, I hope this happened when they were kids, but that is, like, such a little kid thing to do, and it's amazing. Um, I want that on a t-shirt. All 
All right, so I'm going to dupe this and just replace it with some stuff here. So origin. So we're going to do stuff like arrival kingdom. Um, what are some good counterpoints to the idea of like, yeah, like ancient magical kingdoms, reincarnations of interstellar royalty, hidden magical kingdoms, parallel timelines. Uh, what are what are some fun ways that we can mess with this stuff? I mean, you can still like the Lion King. It was just like plagiarism. That is, it was legal plagiarism because sometimes it's okay for you to steal stuff if you are in a position of power to fend off lawsuits and stuff like that. Intertwining timelines, I like this. Intertwining timelines. So it might be like yourselves from another time. It might be like this timeline where everything went totally differently. Um, Because there was a whole bunch of time travel bullshit in Sailor Moon, which is why I'm including this kind of stuff. Uh, like inversions. I want to stray away from like the straight up this is like an evil you because that's what you become when you fall into darkness so um we're gonna exclude that one that one's like always off the table for every single one of these playbooks you just can't ever be the evil version of, your, of you because you have an option to become that at certain points in the game so i don't want to muddy the waters um or like take away the impact of that but Rebels. I think they can be rebels. What do I want to say? Um, and like the darkness is always like a magical thing, just like you are. So yeah, like I want them to. Alex, like you're saying, like relate to the origins that we've picked, but like, you know, in terms of like which one's the most interesting, I'm happy to leave up to the players. Oh yeah, like another, another branch of the same royal family. Uh, what's the what's the most succinct way to describe that? Feuding nobility, that's not quite, because that describes both sides. So we've got rival kingdom, which is close, but then this is like, we have rebels again, kind of parallel, but like how do we, what's the like quick way to describe that? It's, so members of your own family, I mean, family members let me just say royal family members it's just there again uh, da, da, da. I want to do something kind of like the Sailor Moon ones where they're like a reflection of like the earth itself or whatever. I mean, rebels and usurpers can go together as a category. <laughs> zombies, get out of here with your zombies. No zombies allowed. Ain't no zombies in Sailor Moon. Pillars of the Earth. So like, whereas we are celestial things, this is like the Earth itself trying to fight us. Um, I like the idea of like magical gatekeepers. Exiled. 
exiled branch of the family. This is too awkward language. We'll just say like deposed royalty. Deposed slash exiled royalty. Oh yeah, colonizing force. You like colonizing forces, right, Alex? Um, we'll just say interstellar invaders. See, like, antagonism is so much more fruitful. We're, we're thinking of all these great ideas, and then, like, the origins that the players have are so narrow. It's too bad. Um, but anyways, I think that's good. I think that's, like, enough prompts, totally. Um, so origin and then, like, manifestations. So, like, what are these? How are these guys all monstro? Apparently my mind is full of colonialism. It is difficult to escape. Alex, it is very difficult. So we have this like intertwining timelines. Um, we could have one where it's like a dark future come back. Travelers from a dark future. I like that. That's always a fun one. It's like, you know, like Cable from the X-Men. Um, okay, so this now is going to be uh, our manifestations. So this is like more specific ways that they show up. You know, the whole like, they are birds, but have no faces. The Darks timeline with mustaches. Yeah, it's just it's just Sailor Moon with a mustache. Um, cable trunks that do from heroes. Yeah, like there, it's a common trope, right? The like hero coming back trying to change. I mean, Terminator. <laughs> Clouds of pink perfume and flower petals. Uh, so yeah, like what are some fun, what are some fun touchstones for like manifestations of the badness? So like with Sailor Moon, there's all the like crystal people. And they, so always the darkness is going to like corrupt actual humans to do its dirty work. But like, what do these, what do these crazy, you know, intertwining timeline people how do we how do we recognize them what what are the things that stand out about them um you know i think it's i think it's more interesting to have the players um you know mi dig their own graves on this one um i think it suits the game a lot to do so and then yeah like so they're like oh yeah they're like blah 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 they're like you know i tell the mc i'm like yeah they're like these machines but they have no faces and we're like well, machines would have faces normally and it's like and they have awful voices and the mc's like uh okay and you're like oh yeah and they're perversions of birth and the mc's like great excellent um so in this in the same spirit um they don't get to like be like they look exactly like this they're just like they're like, uh, yeah, it's like this kind of thing. Uh, this prompt feels, yeah. And then because of how the human brain works, when later the MC is like, this is what they are like, or like you see this thing, they're like, oh yeah, because we said it was a machine with no face. Oh, that's so cool. It's like immediately you're reincorporating their idea and because you're jamming on it, it like feels really inspiring to them. But what are some fun descriptors here? So like always they're gonna be people. So like this first part of Apocalypse World's thing of like under their disguises they look like whatever. So like they're gonna 
passes people for the most part, I think. But maybe maybe that's maybe I'm being too plain. I mean, Visitant 45, I think like sometimes the direct inversion would be the most interesting, but sometimes not. And also because the player's characters might end up becoming a direct inversion of themselves, I don't want to have the badness be like, you know, like exactly a flip side of them, you know, like it's not going to be Sailor Moon with a mustache, uh, you know, the evil mustache. Um, I want to leave room for the player of Sailor Moon to play the evil inversion of their own character um, when when it comes up. And so for these villains, um, they need to be, you know, like different in the way. So like Queen Beryl is a great example where it's like she's still a queen, right? And also the fact that Sailor Moon is a princess and Queen Beryl is a queen, right? So she has this like more confident, higher status um, embodiment. Uh, and the whole thing with Sailor Moon is that she's this like bumbling, unsure of herself, like teenager trying to figure out her shit. And then we have like Queen Beryl, who is like the boss, you know, like both in the sense of she's like the end boss, but also like Nicki Minaj, like she's a boss, like she's in charge of shit um, and has this like dark confidence. That's a really fun counterpoint and is very different from Sailor Moon. And it's not just, you know, like a, a flip of the character it's like identifying the areas where the character has weaknesses and building this completely separate thing that preys on those well um yeah and so while i don't want to be like necessarily like i feel like these things all need to kind of be people but maybe not maybe it would be interesting if they could be in the same way that the wolves of uh apocalypse world can be people or angels or shadows or machines maybe it would be interesting to have it be like yeah these could be people or they could appear as um you know like some kind of animal or like as black goop that seeps in or something i don't know i don't know how practical it is to because this is less fundamental to the game the reason we have this in apocalypse world and i think it's important to remember is that this is like an extended playbook one and then it's like playbook specific it's not core game stuff right this isn't like the wolves of the maelstrom is not as fundamental to apocalypse world as the like apocalypse itself which is the darkness is the fucking like psychic maelstrom and the apocalypse and everything right this is like the whole core of the game um and so what we actually want to detail uh is you know like we already know that they're gonna that the evil is gonna manifest itself in people that's not you know but we want to know like what its mark that it leaves on people is and we want to know so i like the thing of like they can't interact with certain things or like electricity doesn't work around them or they don't leave you know they don't have reflections um and so like something that we get by default in my game is that manifestations of the big dark shit which is like there's always the manifestations of the big dark evil thing and they're always going to exist within people um and that maybe these like aliens look different but that's not super relevant all the time to the game um and that's not something that we need to worry too much about like picking from a list um i think we have enough of a prompt with their origin to be like oh yeah so they are this kind of thing right so like as a parallel to vincent's move or vincent's rule here where we have you know under their disguises they look like that section the stuff in there is covered by our origin right so like we already kind of know in a core sense what they are so if they're you know exiled royalty from the same you know kingdom as us then you know we know that they're going to be like us or if, and if we are you know interstellar alien royalty then these guys will be as well um and we already have a sense of that um 
So this needs to be like smaller tags in the sense of like they have no faces or they have empty holes for eyes or whatever, right? Like we want to go in this kind of direction um, of these like little bits and pieces of detail. Um, and these can be strictly like a way that they look or it can be a thing that they do or a limitation that they have. It's not so much that they have the mustache themselves, but that they cause other people to grow mustaches. Uh, Moxavanna, that's absolutely the, like, MC principles are going to cover that stuff of, like, yeah, everything's always... Everyone is always in some way reflective of the, like, dark shit in the world, so... Yeah, so, like, part of what we're signing up for when we say we are, you know, these, like we've decided that our team of magical whatever are like this is we're saying cool and all of that stuff is more or less transgressive within the society and gets oppressed in some way um and so this is like the vehicle of that oppression that we just want to detail a little bit more um and like our obligation that we choose says a lot about the kinds of you know pressures and badness that we'll be experiencing as well so like some of these are already some of the other choices that we've made thus far are like both an upside and a downside you know or are coloring coloring the whole breadth of the setting um and so for the manifestations of the darkness it can be stuff like mm, i mean maybe i need to drop this even because i'm having trouble thinking of like good content to put in here Maybe this is not a helpful thing to describe. <laughs> Made of mat nano machines drink blood. Yeah, like I'm not sure what I'm trying to accomplish with this little bit on manifestations. I feel like the origin is already saying a lot. So, yeah, like I just, this is just like, I'm saying words, but I don't really have a strong like idea behind them. I mean, we don't necessarily want to. So here's the thing. Um, for the most part, the shit that they deal with in the in the like obligation phase is mundane. There's not a lot of like wrestling with the um, with the magical bad stuff directly, uh, and so there is a move that comes up when you specifically when it does actually bleed in, um, and there's a move for that. But it's not going to be happening all the time. But what is happening all the time is that the like. the mundane stuff is always connected to the magical badness. The two are one and the same, but just different faces of the same thing. Um, so like the manifestations of the darkness are just like everything is, it all is. Um, I'm trying to think of like, I'm, I mean, my motivation in setting up this, like, extra set of tags was to be like, yeah, I want ways to, like, characterize the badness. But I feel like Origin is already a lot in terms of characterizing it. Um, there, we don't need to divvy up space within the, like, Origin the way we would with the roles for the player characters. And then Obligation already kind of spans the others. It's not like the darkness has to go and do chores or anything. So, like, manifestations could be, like, the kinds of oppression that we face during the obligation phase. Yeah, I feel like agenda is already kind of defined, though, in how I'm thinking about, like, you know, like, what my MC moves and stuff are going to be. Um, and what my MC's agenda is. Um, which I will read out. Sorry, that was probably really loud. There was some small change on my notebook. 
So my current MC agenda, or principles rather, I don't have the agenda flushed out. But there are a bunch of the like core ones, like address the characters and not the players, move but misdirect, right? Some of the stuff we're just keeping from Apocalypse World straight up. Um, some of them from Monster Hearts, we're taking accept people but only conditionally, uh, ask provocative questions and build, be a fan of the PCs, sometimes disclaim decision making. Um, have the darkness seep through every crack in the world. So the idea is that like, it's always kind of pushing at the boundaries of reality and trying to like advance its darkness, its dark agenda. Um, and make all NPCs give voice to the darkness. So all the bad shit comes out of NPCs' mouths. I've never just like, there's a big black cloud and it's making people act mean. It's just like, yeah, people are just acting mean. Um, give monsters hope of redemption uh, and make adversaries not villains um, drive the virtuous to the brink of the abyss um, which is a good counterpoint to have the monsters have hope of redemption um, and every scene and every move is part of the struggle against the darkness in general and the particular adversaries that we are facing right so like as players of this game what is what is an interesting way that I can inform the MC's ability to do that stuff that I just described? I like this of yeah, like what what it is that the darkness is trying to accomplish. So we would describe that as the darkness's goal, question mark, agenda. I like agenda in this case. Choose their origin, agenda, and nature. So nature is still something I want to touch on in a little bit. I'm going to copy this. So we have like right like corrupt slash subvert humankind um, destroy or re terraform the earth planet destroy the planet destroy the universe colonize the planet um, destroy the protagonists avenge some ancient wrong Yeah, because there's, like, the explicit, like, agenda of the villains, right? Which I think totally is compelling to have the players choose. Um, but then there's, like, what the MC... Right, because there's... In as much as the players of the game and their characters are two separate things, I like to imagine that, like, the adversity in the game and the MC are two separate things, and the... Adversity is trying to accomplish one thing, right? Which is like directly achieve its goals. But the MC is trying to uphold all the principles, right? And this is true in Apocalypse World where you're like, oh yeah, well your NPCs are like following their bits around and trying to, you know, like Dremor only cares about murdering everything that's in front of him and Bucky wants to like sleep with anything and you know, whatever. Like they all have their like motivations and their individual goals that they're pursuing or the like fronts have goals that they're pursuing but my goal as an mc is different from those right i'm not so deep into those npcs that i can't see the story at large um yes and exactly i don't believe there's any such thing as metagaming so screw all that noise sorry just the whole like metagaming thing just bothers me 
because I think it's just a totally spurious argument. Is that the word I meant to use? I don't even care. You can quote me on that, even if it doesn't mean what I meant it to. So I like the idea of having like an explicit agenda for the villains. Um, because that's cool, because this is like, you get to decide kind of what you're fighting for, right? Um, and that it is, again, explicit. Because all of this stuff could happen at the table regardless, right? Like, even if I never wrote this on, the players might decide, oh yeah, well, we're fighting to save the world. Because the villains obviously want to destroy the world or like destroy the environment or whatever. Um, but in this case, this is a way where I can say, you know, like the villain is trying to do something. What is it? And then we all have to like, we are going to know what it is. And I can guarantee that my players have to do it, have to come up with that. Spurious. Not being what it purports to be, false or fake. That is exactly the word I wanted to use. Yes, I feel so smart. This might not be a matter of metagaming, which doesn't exist at all. <laughs> But more that it might take away accomplishment of the players, but maybe that's a matter of preference. I mean, for my part, I think it's interesting to be like, oh yeah, they are trying to do this. Because m me saying that as a player is me being like, this is what we're fighting for. Which, to my mind, is then a great bit of fuel for the MC to be like, oh, they're interested in fighting for this. So that you already know where to push. Because that means they're like, oh, well, any time... They're worried about the world getting destroyed. So anytime I do something that's going to destroy the world, then like they have to fight that, right? That's like a part of their expressed conflict that we are establishing. Um, and part of why I think it's important for this to be um, determined by the players is that we are better at scaring ourselves than other people are at scaring us, right? So like we will make a statement about what we want to protect and that is interesting and compelling and leads to like good fuel for the MC to then push there, right? And yeah, I like the idea of keeping the group really cohesive because we need to know what our goals are as a team. Hello, Yumi Meds. How are you? Um, cliffhanger finale of the show should always be re -upped. Yeah, like, like they're never going to fully beat the darkness. The darkness's agenda can be really big and sweeping, and certainly it can change and will change in play. But this is just like the situation as things start. Um, which reminds me, like, Burning Wheel as a, like, game design manual has a lot to say about, like, the importance of the situation. And that's a big part of what the, like, team playbook is about defining, is giving us a situation and if we have that already drawn out and with some like clear, you know, like one side wants this, one side wants that, I'm on this side that wants this thing, right? Like I can, I can hit the ground running in a way that I can't in a vacuum. Like we might still discover in play this thing, but I really like having um, a like strong springboard of situation. Um, and like Apocalypse World does it to... Uh, to an extent does this kind of stuff um it's less some aspects of it are less explicit than this but a lot of it is also like in the playbooks for the characters um a lot of it is in the like mc principles stuff like that i just wanted to have i like the idea of having it in this place that we like all collaborate on this one playbook that's like a playbook for all of us um which i think is a fun like way for me to play as a designer with the format of a Powered by the Apocalypse game. Um, did I get patriarchy in the agenda? I mean, I Destroy the Planet is in there, Alex. I don't know what more you want from me. Uh, having a thing that all the characters agree to fight against also helps ensure that they're still allies. Absolutely, right? Like, I want everyone to be clear like yeah this is us and this is them right like we are fighting this thing not each other um and by making all of these dark agendas pretty big um you know we're making it so that there's lots of room for them to like have small antagonism but still fundamentally be on the same side and go fight that's 
fight the bad stuff, you know? Um, I am I am happy to allow the players to fight each other so long as it, you know, is like streaming into where we fight the bigger badness, right? Like if it lets us realize stuff about ourselves and then go fight the big dark villain, great. That's super cool. That's great story material. If us fighting just bogs the game down and like is stupid and pointless and doesn't take us anywhere, then yeah, no, I don't have any time for that. I'm not going to design a game that lets you do that. Uh, I'm going to try to push you away from that kind of behavior, which is part of what this and like this is just a list, right? This is just a list, but it can it can accomplish that stuff, which I think is really interesting, um, right? We're just delineating a space for play. That's what this team playbook is all about. <laughs> so, so let's get to nature, the nature of the darkness. Um, and this is one where we can get like patriarchy in there, Alex, just for you. Because I know you want I know you want there to be patriarchy to crush. Goodness knows I want there to be patriarchy to crush. Um, so this is nature, the nature of the darkness. And you might say to me, Andrew, why are you letting them decide the very nature of the thing they are trying to fight? To which I say, again, they're gonna do a better job scaring themselves than I am. So, literally Unicron. <laughs> yeah, the nature is it's literally a robot from space. Um, right, so like, what are we trying to describe here? So we know the origin, which is like, in a more mundane sense, like what are they, right? So like, they are a rival kingdom. They are pillars of the earth, whatever that means, right? There's some kind of fundamentally like earth annoyed thing. Um, and we're like space people. Um, magical gatekeepers, right? So we have some like prompts to start talking about like what they are. Um, and their agenda says a lot about who they are, but the nature is like, why are you like that? Um, which is not the most helpful way for me to describe it. But like, it's some clue to their motivation and their methods is what I wanna get at with these like nature tags, right? So agenda is what they're trying to do and origin is like where they came from um, and to a certain extent why they're here. Um, but nature can talk about like something more essential about them. Um, and let's try to, let me try to think of like something that actually fits into this. So. Maybe maybe this is like, and again, this is one where I'm like not really sure if this is actually needed because it might be that the other things is gonna are gonna give us enough of this that I don't need to have it at this little list of prompts. I'm yeah. So this is not like, you know, like what they're like made out of or what they're, um, or like how you fight them exactly. This is like. Ugh, examples are so important when trying to describe this kind of shit. So, like, a, a good nature tag would be something like endlessly hungering. You know, like, this weird, like, what, what, is it, what it is about them that's, like, fundamentally broken and wrong. Um, Right, because like some of the agendas that I put down include some backstory, right? Like avenge some ancient wrong or, you know, like colonize the planet alludes to a lot of stuff, re-terraforming the planet. These all kind of allude to um, things that might be going on. Like they're prompts in that sense of you can go, oh, okay, well, like why do they need to re-terraform the planet? What's that, what's that about? Like their planet is different and so they need a different like environment or they just are like, planet sculptors like they just want to do it as like an art object 
um, so it can go into their planet sculpture garden, which is the whole universe. Um, I think nature could be stuff like like feeds on emotions. Um, it's kind of like I want to have like a really abstract prompt that gets kind of into like more hand wavy stuff in a lot of senses. Yeah, an eternity of pain and torture is a great nature for them. Um, and I want these to be like more poetic and more evocative um, because this is like a prompt for the more poetic elements of the game, right? Of the fiction. <laughs> Just put the deadly sins. It's a little too Christian. Which I would like to stay away from a like I would like to stay away from any like established morality with this. Because this is very much um my hope is to very much make a like queer game. Um, or a game that is about that kind of you know, like where the like the wheel the word blah, 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 the world building is from a very like queer place where it's, you know. Like the bad shit can straight up be patriarchy. Um, but as a touchstone for what we're trying to make, totally. And like we can make some of our prompts out of stuff that would fit into the like, you know, the like Christian seven deadly sins stuff. Could totally be good. Um, so there were some good ones in here already. Um, an eternity of pain, I think, is excellent. Um, endless hungering. Just some real edgelord shit like that. I kind of want, like, fascism to be one of these, but I want it to be a little bit more colorful, like... deep need for hierarchy so the thing that these are kind of reminding me of is um, in apocalypse world in the fronts section so the fronts have like tags about them um, where is this in my book I don't know if I have a lot of the MC stuff Fronts, 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 fronts. Come on. Right, so um, I'll read the, the list of like Warlords ones, and these are kind of what I'm getting at. So as an example, here's the, all the text for Warlords. So a Warlord is the, a Warlord threat is the Warlord plus the gang, the other people under the Warlord's control. Choose which kind of Warlord. Slaver, impulse to own and sell people. Hive Queen, impulse to consume and swarm. Prophet, impulse to denounce and overthrow. Dictator, impulse to control. Collector, impulse to own. Alpha Wolf, impulse to hunt and dominate. Right? Like, consume and swarm. Denounce and overthrow. Hunt and dominate. These are all, like, they're not specific, but they're very evocative. They're, like, it's using very emotional language um, that is deliberately nonspecific because it wants to kind of get your right like restoring order to the universe um to order the universe uh to seek dominance in worship of a higher power. I mean, so hence my choice not to do restoring order, but just to order the universe, right? Like they have this, that its nature is about this like implementation of structure. Right? And how that can be 
really limiting or that can be really awful depending on what side of that you're on right so like an obvious connection for me is like oh well to order the universe would be a great one for like destroying the planet or re-terraforming the planet right where it's just like oh there's a certain way that the universe should be and your planet doesn't fit so ping, right like we're building a highway through here we have to tear your planet down um to propagate and thrive yeah this is, this is some good shit to propagate and thrive right so these are like evocative tags for the thing that color its behavior and like its way that it pursues stuff <laughs> darkness wants to organize it chronologically but obviously it needs to be alphabetical it exactly Good villains think they're right. Great ones actually are. I mean, I like to think that half the time it's unclear whether or not I'm playing villains or heroes in my uh, appearances on various story game shows. Because I I love that kind of, the like evocativeness of villains um, or of like antagonistic characters. It's just so great to be like, oh, but they... They're just like so convinced that they're right and that this or that this thing is like necessary. I mean, it's definitely all a gray area. But the people, you know, the people perpetuating these things always, you know, they deeply believe that they're doing what they're doing is correct or necessary. But that's the thing people say. Yeah, exactly, Alex. You don't, you don't want to ever really commit to a morality. The thief knows what he's doing is wrong, right? So, which means if I am convinced that I own something already and I take it, right, am I a thief? I am reclaiming this. As, as soon as I change how I talk about it, right? To reflect the void in others. I'm going to change your language a little bit to see the void, to see their emptiness reflected in others. That is perfect, though. Like, that. I really like that as a prompt, this idea of, like, I want you to, to know, I want you to be like me and know my pain. To collect and catalog life forms is a fun one. I want to make it a little bit broader, Alex, but again, I really like that sentiment of just like this other thing that comes along and just like wants to like, how would I describe it? To sterilize and preserve. I mean, in this particular political climate that we're in, I feel like this whole notion of, you know, how people see themselves is pretty relevant. I think it might be coloring this conversation we're having, friends. Um, so, okay, so let's just review. We've got, its nature is an eternity of pain. Its nature is endless hungering. Its nature is to order the universe. Its nature is to seek dominance. Its nature is in worship of a higher power. Its nature is to propagate and thrive. Its nature is to see their emptiness reflected in others. Or its emptiness, anyways, whatever. Uh, or its nature is to sterilize and preserve. Great, I feel good. I feel good about this little se section of prompts. I think this does a nice little bit of world building um, and obviously we'll have like different prompts and stuff for different uh, team playbooks. But for the playtest, I just want to have one. Um, it's going to be mostly empty because it's missing a whole bunch of components. Uh, and what I have come to terms with is that that's just how it's going to be and that's fine. There's just, there's just going to be lots of empty stuff. And that's just, that's just how it is for now. 
So I want to come back to my uh, temporary playbook, which again has a big, big empty space on page three, but that's okay. Um, and I want to add one move. There's one move I want to add to the game um, in my basic moves. So let's find the right section here. So I want to move for Basically, I want to do that thing that came up. It came up earlier, the idea of like, I want the PCs to be able to fight, and I want it to kind of like for that energy that they're exerting to flow into, um, you know, eventually like fighting the badness to like resolving their shit and springboarding off of that into fighting the badness. Um, and so I want to give them more moves to put more moves at their disposal that will let them tell that kind of story uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of re-jigging of things um, and then when you, when you, when you try. so right now the only one I have that I can envision as being used for like my character like squabbles with your character is when you try to get your way um, and there could be some other ways that we could frame it to like make some of the other moves come in, but it's we're like we're reaching pretty hard at that point. It could be like, you know, if if two characters are arguing, um, if one player doesn't decide to just like give up and you know use like embrace suffering, or you know turn it into a relying on their friends or whatever, right? Like we have we have some moves that we can pull in. Um, but there isn't a good, like, you two disagree or, like, not even, like, this player and this player think it would be fun to have their characters, like, have a cat fight or whatever, right? Like, just do some shitty teenager st stuff at each other. And, like, how can I use that to then keep my story moving forward? Um, Peter Farber, we're making a... Um, tabletop but like pen and paper role-playing game uh about uh well or that's designed to be able to make like magical girl anime type stories so like sailor moon uh and a like dearth of other things we were talking about how captain planet kind of fits the mold or uh like steven universe is a great like more recent example or madoka the one that's like a magical girl anime but it's totally like a revisionist genre piece where it's super dark and everything's actually really like messed up and it's all about like subverting a lot of the genre tropes um and we want to be able to cover uh i don't necessarily want to be co covering that whole range we're kind of drifting more in the darker space of the genre um and so having it be a lot about like teenage characters who are kind of powerless and then get these like brief flashes of transcendent um you know world changing power and can can do cool stuff but then they go back to like the drudgery of teenage life uh and we're building it on the apocalypse world engine i have heard of tabletop simulator good for playing dominoes or pirating board games and playing them online from what i've seen i think i watched some some folks from my friend adam's community play the battlestar galactica board game in there it was pretty cool <laughs> roll for pettiness yeah we kind of want a like squabbling move because i feel like that's an important part of the fiction that we're currently not um we don't have like a structure for but it's super important like sailor moon and, you know, any of the Sailor Scouts, except maybe uh, Mercury, like, they butt heads all the time. Um, and, in, you know, at the end of the day, those butting heads, butting of heads, like, teach them lessons and they move on. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to have it be, like, yeah, that we use our, like, links uh, to fight each other or that those come in in some way. Um, I mean, I'm halfway of a mindset that like our good outcome, our 10 plus outcome is that we each get a link with each other or that like one person gets a link with the other. Um, 
and it's like not clear what stat to root it in that kind of stuff but like steven universe has a lot of really good examples of this where like the gems fight each other all the time <laughs> they're like constantly at each other's throats about shit and then they have this like right there's this cathartic like it's okay to fight as long as you make up and then like when you do make things right and you know find empathy for one another then boom this like all this stuff happens right um so i'm yeah i feel like with the with what i have right now there is no clear answer and i would like for there to be one that's like a little bit more straight up I mean, having the move be when you, you when you make things right with someone could be a really good move. And so, like, if if our characters are like arguing over something, there's no like mechanical solution. So we can be like, "You're stupid. You suck. I slap you." And we're like, "Okay, cool. Yeah, all that happens. That's fine. What do you do about it later? Like, is someone gonna make nice with the other?" Um, and then, like, we have all these other things, but there's no, like, direct, just, like... I mean, I feel like trying to get your way is great for just, like, I just want to steamroll this other person. I, I feel this way about it, and I just go to steamroll them. Um, whether or not they can resist and ideas of, like, tempo and all that kind of shit... Right? That's a problem. Um, if you're getting into, like truly appropriately handling like two players being in conflict with each other um we have to have some way of establishing like ultimately who's doing what usually the fiction can drive it pretty well um but i feel like i feel like yeah like not giving the characters a lot of ways mechanically to like poop on each other is probably fine uh, as long as I have a move that's about reconciliation, which is the important part of what this like arc that I just described, right? So yeah, like when you when you try to make things right, because like again, when you my move isn't when you get your way; it's when you try to get your way. And so similarly, we can have a move that's about trying to make things right. Um. Or when you try to make amends. And then what would what would follow from this? So, okay. Okay. Let's just start writing and we'll kind of fumble our way through it. Uh, I want to be at 6.58. Boop. So when you try to make amends. Roll plus stat. The stat you roll. Not terribly important. It would probably be grace, though. Let's put it under grace. Just cause. I feel like. I feel like it's actually the most appropriate stat now that I look at it. We've already learned something. Uh, so when you try to make amends. Say why you are sorry. And roll plus grace. Say what you are sorry for, I think is even funnier. So we'll do that one. So here's my argument for why it's grace. Um, and you can, you all can tell me how you feel about it, but like, And this is one of those things where, like, this is re revelatory about how I think about interpersonal relationships. But, like, and I see, I, so this is just, like, my take on what I see. But, like, I see people going to apologize to other people. And half the time, what they really want, right, is, like, can you, it's more of an, it's more of, like, hey, can you stop being mad at me? <laughs> right? Like, 
a lot of the time when people apologize, it's not because they actually feel empathy for the person, right? It's not like, oh, like, I hurt you, and I, like, saw the pain that I caused you, and I thought about it a long time, and I really found some empathy, and, like, yeah, yeah, well, the way that I hurt you was so bad, so terrible. Like, hell no. No, it's always like, it's inconvenient for me that you're upset. Can you please stop being upset? Right? Like, we're, we're more asking people to get over stuff than we are apologizing for things a lot of time, especially when we're shitty teenagers. And so, I am putting it under the grace realm because this is like, because grace is all about walking all over people anyway, so I just think it would be funny to have this, like, loop where you can be like, oh yeah, I was shitty to you, but can we just be friends again? Can we, can you just be nice? Can we just, you know... You need to tell me that it's okay, I hurt you, you won't tell me that. Yeah. Hilarious use of caps lock. Um, yeah, you need to tell me it's okay, I hurt you. Why won't you tell me that? It hurts. You know, like my own guilt makes it hurt, right? And as Alex says, right, sometimes people just say the right words or need to hear the right words. And no amount of empathy will do if those words aren't there. Right? Like, empathy is actually very difficult to express. Um, and sometimes, like, like, I have had a lot of situations in my life where, like, I don't give a crap if people apologize to me about this thing that they did that, you know, like, really hurt me or really pissed me off. What actually matters to me, in many cases, is just, like, can you just never do that again? Can you just, like, actually correct your behavior? And, like, and don't talk about it again. And don't apologize to me about it. Because if you come and apologize to me, then I have to forgive you. And me forgiving you is actually a lot of work. Um, you know, I have to, like, reopen up my feelings. And then I have to deal with my feelings when you apologize to me. Right, so this, this is my mentality in putting it under this idea of, like, grace, right? That this is a move that is actually about getting people to stop being mad at you. The other option is that we put this in with, like, our links. The issue is if we make it like roll plus links. Uh, I don't really have a lot of control over how many links you can have with someone, um, and we will, we will spend them eventually, but this could be like, yeah, roll plus like eight, and you just always get a 10, you know? Um, so, hey, you know, this is my logic, but maybe, maybe we find some other way of making this work. Um, Right, like Sith Master is kind of in my head about this, right? Like, this is also very true for expressing grief and consoling those in grief. Words are said, but they feel very hollow, right? There's kind of this, like, a, like, social order around apologizing. You see, Alex, so, like... You want to feel the connection with someone when someone apologizes to you. The words are less important so long as they can show that they see how what they did hurt me and that they regret it. So for me, this is, this is like kind of similar to how I feel, right? Where I'm just like, you, the person apologizing, being able to correct their error is in my mind, like, you know, that's like how I feel the matter should go and what is the most important to me. Um, and it kind of feels like that's what you're getting at, right? Of being like, I want you to understand what and why and how the thing you did that was wrong was wrong. Um, plus links spent because the friendship suffered. I mean, I would like for this to be a move that's more about reconciliation. Um, gamble links to make the move is kind of an interesting idea. Although that gets into a very mechanically complex territory. Y 
Yeah, I absolutely don't want it to be, as Salmelo says, a move that generates links based on rolling plus your links value. Because then it's like totally useless when it's totally useless before it accomplishes the thing that you're hoping it will do. And then after it does accomplish it, totally useless again because you just like succeed at it all the time. Or, well, totally uh, trivialized, rather, not useless. <laughs> yeah, it's like Moxie Ben is going on about, right? Like apologizing for the behavior versus apologizing that they're upset. Like, oh, I'm sorry that you're <laughs> that hurt you. <laughs> you're weak you suck i'm so sorry for you right the kind of like patronizing apology um yeah i like i like keeping this grounded in a sense of like you know expectations and um like etiquette around fucking up and that our characters are really bad at actually expressing themselves, right? So um, having this kind of like stilted formal apology move uh, gets at that. Yeah, I am sorry you are so sensitive is a classic. I love hearing that. I love being having that expressed to me. It's great. Hmm. So what can this move accomplish, right? I mean, on a 10 plus, presumably we want to award like a link with that person or them with you. Um, probably like they mark a link with you. Right? And grace is about being able to make them feel good about you apologizing to them. Whether or not you mean it, irrelevant. Whether or not it, you know you will make the same mistake again, irrelevant. This is about whether or not you can make them feel good about it, right? Like they can pull some, some confidence in you out of your apology. On 10 plus, they mark a link with you. On a seven and nine, on a seven to nine something, on a miss something, the person you are apologizing to can. will either uh, can choose to forgive you. On a miss, your character dies. Yep, just tear up the character sheet, new character. Yeah, I'm still on the fence about some of the mechanistic stuff about like whether or not it is ever okay to take away a link, um, and whether or not that's like a space that I where I threaten the characters. Because um, right now, like the only times you're getting links are on like ten up successes, which are going to be rare because your highest stat will be a plus one. Um, so it's quite difficult to roll a ten. Um, you got to roll a nine on two dice, which is, you know, however unlikely. It's quite unlikely. Um, yes, they literally die of embarrassment. Uh, and so given that they're difficult to get, if I just like casually take them away when you fail a roll, which is quite common, um, rolling, you know, if just like across the board on all the moves, um, you know, like some of the missed results included losing string, uh, losing social links, then, you know, there's like a 40% chance that you lose a social link uh, when you roll those things. And if it's half the moves, then let's say, you know, like a 20% chance that you lose it. 
Um, and if that's just as common as you gaining it, then we're entering into like a sub some zero kind of situation, which is not terribly helpful. Um, links are one directional. Uh, so it's like, I have a link with you, but that doesn't mean that you have a link with me. Um, can the apology move just make things worse? Definitely on a miss. Definitely on a miss, you come off as an ass. On a miss, your apology seems disingenuous. No, just... Seems ungenuine. What is the what is the word? I feel like ungenuine is not a word. Is disingenuous the opposite of genuine? I don't feel like it is. I got a disingenuous definition. Not candid or sincere. Yes, your apology seems disingenuous. It is the opposite of genuine. Disingenuous. So if it's genuine, it's one thing. It can't be ingenuine. It has to be disingenuine. English is fucking weird. English is a weird language. What is a fight between characters? Is it just a role-playing event? Do we just create fights so that we can make up for a chance at a link? Do we take any debuff while we were fighting? I mean, our characters get in a fight and I hope, and it's like purely for me to later roll this move. Seems legit. I don't know, that's a fine way to play. We're making, we're making fiction. Insincere is a better choice of words. <laughs> Let's use that. Oh my gosh, that is a much better choice. Your apology seems insincere. So, either way, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Either way, the person you are apologizing to can choose whether or not to forgive you. What if trying to make up was the only way to lose a link by rolling? Maybe it is. But then if you don't have the link to lose, right? Because you're not guaranteed to have the links. So we could have a move that's like, when you get into a fight with another character, um, that is more kind of general, um, that doesn't involve rolling or whatever, but it's just like, a link becomes up for grabs, and then a way that you can get at that is to, I kind of like this idea of like, characters who are fighting, it's like a pregnant state, and then there can be this like, beneficial or negative result, there's kind of like, we enter into a death pact over this I mean and this is the thing right if it's we want this to be we want to have there be a lot of carrot behind this move not a lot of stick uh, currently links cannot go negative I mean, here's the thing. 
what is the difference between a positive and negative link? Right, like how I choose to characterize it is entirely my own business. So I can be like, oh yeah, we get links together because my character, and if we refer back to this sheet, one of the roles can be the rival. And so my all of my links with you might be just like the two of us fighting and me wanting to be better than you all the time. And that can be our whole relationship. And it can be this like toxic codependent thing where I just like, I just have to be better than you. And if you're better than me, then I'll just kill myself. And, oh. um, and I can have hella links with you. I can have a shitload of links, right? Like, why not? And th all those links can just be about me like obsessing over you and how like our relationship it fuels me in this like dark way. That's totally fine. Um, links are a currency within the game. Um, and they're a currency that gives you access to your powers, to your like superpowers. Um, to the point where if you don't have links, you like basically can't transform is kind of what I'm thinking about right now. What even are links, right? So it's like... In Monster Hearts, strings uh, exist as a way to give you power over other people. So if I have a link on you, or a string on you, rather, uh, I have power over you. Uh, in my game, if I have a link with you, then that link gives me power to do others. It's like flipping the directionality of strings and making them be an empowering thing rather than a power over kind of thing. Um, and so they are asymmetrical. Um, so like our relationship can give me a bunch of power but not give you any power. I could have three links with you and you could have zero with me. And that would be you know, a perfectly natural way for things to develop. Um, and so down the line when we're fighting the darkness, I can spend the links to like transform like it, it, it might be that you're gated, you need a certain number of links to transform or it costs you in some other way. Um, certainly the links are gonna be used to like empower your moves. There might be moves that you only get to access if you spend links, that kind of stuff. Um, and so the idea being that like the scene at the end of season one in Sailor Moon, um, where she like wins against the bad stuff it is by the power of like her relationships that she overcomes, right? She gets like the support from all of her friends. Um, and so they're like, you know, ghosts all hold the thing with her and then it superpowers the thing and crushes the bad guy. That kind of shit is what we want to use these links to uh, enable. Um, and again, as Mox Ivana points out, right? Like not having links is detrimental to the player, right? Like it's part of playing the game is to get links. So you're gonna be spending your downtime actions getting links. You're gonna be hoping to get these 10 up results that can give you links with characters. Um, and they are so important and pretty hard to get. Um, so again, I feel weird about like maybe taking them away. I gotta like play test to see if that's a, a reasonable consequence. Right now I'm trying to keep all of my miss results to being either giving you strain, which is just like harm it's just damage um so i plug damage onto you or it's like fictional positioning stuff um feels like i would spend my links with you to empower you i mean that's another way that we can frame it i think both are interesting Uh, yeah, Max Event, I totally want to avoid what you're describing of like, there are all of these players, right? Like, we have 20 players in our game, and everyone's just like, cool, I go do my own thing. Like, no, not allowed. You got to get into the uncomfortable mingling space. I feel like fighting should be a burden while the fight is happening, but beneficial when it ends positively. So we have like a two stage thing, potentially. Um,. So maybe my seven to nine result is like about still being embroiled in this like this is like unresolved conflict for the making amends move. And so we can say like within the fiction, if we're like fighting, if we have if we have beef, 
and one character goes to try to like make amends um mm, on a seven to nine So, on a seven to nine, I like the idea of like, on a seven to nine, you don't like fuck it up, but the conflict is still kind of ongoing, and until they apologize to you, it's like still looming over you. And then, here it is. So there is a move. It is totally open-ended, and it's just when when you and another character are fighting, you can't spend links with each other. It, like, locks out your links. Could be an option. I feel like that might disincentivize fighting too much unless the payoff for making amends was really big. You each mark one link. with each other. Seven to nine. The issue is unresolved. Still, sorry, the conflict is unresolved. The conflict between you is still unresolved. until they apologize to you. When Pearl and Garnet were fighting, how that played out. Yeah, so like, I mean, the two of them fight all the fucking time. And it's great, right? They like learn about each other by fighting. Um, because it prompts them to like, here's... Here's what those fights are always about, right? They're always about bad communication. As always, something goes unsaid between the two of them, and they're like unable to understand each other and what motivates each other. And so they butt heads because, you know, Amethyst wants it to be one way. Or sorry, I'm thinking of Amethyst and Pearl always fighting. But anyways, Amethyst and Pearl are fighting. It's a suitable example, right? And it's because Amethyst and Pearl don't get each other right like they think that things should be one way and one thinks that things should be the other way and they don't understand why they think that they just feel that they're wrong right and that their way is better and they have all these reasons but they don't actually get to find out the why right there's no communication um and then they fight right because they're just like you're wrong and bullshit and they're like no you're wrong and bullshit and they fight and they fight and they fight and then finally they like are screaming at each other <laughs> about like well i just wish you would be this way because blah and then they're like i never knew it was because blah and then boom resolution right and everyone feels better about each other um and so it's like this uh cathartic like prompt right this way of like finally actually getting to talk about your feelings i mean yeah i don't actually I like the idea of this. Maybe this is my fail result. Maybe this is more interesting than my apology seeming insincere. In fact, yeah, this is this is a perfect fail result. On a miss. Boom. I mean, yeah, I really like the dynamic of, yeah, I apologize to you. And his visit says, you don't accept my apology because you're a teenager. And then you need to apologize to me because you were a dick and didn't accept my apology. Um, I think I think that needs to go into my failure case, though. Um, seven to nine result can be a little bit more muddy. I think on a seven to nine, it puts power in the target of your apologies hands. So on a seven to nine, they decide if they forgive you or not.
if they do, the matter is settled. If not, it counts as a miss. So if you if you get a seven to nine, it's kind of like the roll never happened, uh, in a sense that like the other player just like naturally decides whether or not they accept your apology. They don't have to forgive you, but they see that you are genuinely sorry. But your apology feels genuine. Right, because I don't want to tell people how to feel. So it's just like, when you try to make amends, say what you are sorry for and roll plus brace. On a 10 plus, you each mark one link with each other. They don't have to forgive you, but your apology feels genuine. Right, so you get some kind of like resolution there. Um, on a 7 to 9, they decide if they forgive you or not. If they do, the matter is settled. If not, it counts as a miss. Counts as a miss is maybe a bit harsh. I feel like if not, there should be something. But not it counts as a miss. On a miss, the conflict between you is still unresolved until they apologize to you. I mean, the reason they would want it to count as a fail is so that they can try to apologize on a 10 up later, or because they just like genuinely hate you. Yeah, I think. Matterick, maybe that's a better way to do it, right? Because, like, again, I don't want to tell people how to feel. I also don't want to have the apology necessarily be sincere. Okay, and here is here is an issue that we're running into with the design of this move. Right? Like, so in Apocalypse World, there is literally one circumstance where you can tell a player what to do, roll dice, and then they have to do it. There is literally one. And it is on an open-ended 13-plus... Uh, um, go aggro. And I want to check if that actually still exists. This is, this is an important design decision, and I'm curious where Vincent went with it. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I don't know if it's in this like quick start version of the rules that I have. Um, 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 um. Because it's real small. I don't think this describes any of the opening of the moves. Hmm. 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 Yeah, it's not in here. Okay. Well, we'll consult this book and read the part about that because I think it's really important um, right on a, on a 12 plus they have to cave and do what you want you've overwhelmed they can't possibly bring themselves to force your hand um, when, it, when your character goes aggro on another player character do your best to remind the other player that this is a possible outcome it's the only place in the whole game where one player can simply tell another player what to have her character do so it'll, best go, it'll go best if you warn her and make sure she's ready and that just feels gross. It feels like so completely not in the spirit of the game. Um, you know, I don't think that you can... I don't want to do links with NPCs. It's dumb. I don't want people to be pursuing 
to be playing like a series of unconnected one one on one sessions with the MC, basically. Yeah, so the like basic Go Aggro hasn't really changed much. I'm just thinking of the like open ended version where on a twelve plus like they just have to do it, which is fine with NPCs, but like just because it's an example of like telling a player what they have to do or how they have to feel, right? And it's the only instance of it existing in that game. I don't want to make my apology move be like, yo, you have to forgive me because I apologize to you so well. That feels fucking terrible. I mean, yeah, Matterick, it's like, yeah, maybe it would be good to have links and be able to have links with, like, the pivotal character who is, you know, falling to darkness and whatever else. And maybe it's like you can only have links with that character, with like one character at a time per like arc. Um, but then that gets weird because we have this like holy NPC, right, who turns into kind of a GM PC, which is bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, turning someone on, you're powerless. But... So with turning someone on, you're telling them that they they get this feeling and that it has nothing to do with how they actually need to, like, behave, right? They still get a complete decision about how they behave. So what we could say in a similar vein is... So, like, the person apologizes to us, and they do it so well that we can't help but believe them. We still don't need to forgive them. There's, like, this thing that happens inside the character, and then we can just, like, but we don't need to have that actually come to the surface. Yeah, I can forgive you and still treat you like crap. Totally. And, yes... Mets, hey ho, I do not want to have any kind of GMPC bullshit. Game's already heavy enough on the MC. We don't need to have an MC PC. Um, so we each mark one length with each other. They do not have to forgive you. But they do not have to forgive you, but your apology. feels sincere. So this could be where we do like a carrot and stick kind of thing where like they can decide to forgive you and get this or not and get this. <laughs> you made the right noises, therefore I must forgive you. You apologize very well. The flawless execution. And then it just still hurts later. They do not have to forgive you, but the issue is settled. <laughs> you forgive the player and you each gain a link. You do not forgive the person and you gain a link and they do not. 
yeah, give it the option, give it like some carrot, right? Where you can just be like, oh yeah, if you forgive me, we get to be better friends and it's good for everyone. I like that. So they decide if they forgive you or not. If they do, you get one link with them. If they do not, they get one link with you. So it's like, oh yeah, you were you were like you apologize to me and I just like retain that power a little bit. And it's but it's good for me. I feel good about you apologizing to me even though I don't forgive you. And then the other option is I do forgive you and you feel good about having successfully apologized to me, but it's not so successful that we both feel good about it. So yeah, seven to nine is where we get that like, uh, something, something. On a miss, the conflict between you is still unresolved until they apologize to you. Strong move, but it requires that we fight each other. So the question is, what does us fighting each other look like? Acceptance is just the recognition of contrition. Um, I definitely like, I have a lot of moves that displace choice. Um, and I think that's really uh, in line with like the ideas of the game, right? Of like connecting the players. And so any, I can't even make a move without directly involving one of the other players. Um, you both take one string. So we could add this cost to balance out the fact that we're getting a link on a seven to nine result. So it's like, You both take one strain because it's so awkward. So, yeah, when you are in conflict with another character, another PC. So now we need to have the like, the reason we apologize. So I specifically have said it's when you try to make amends. So this could be not an apology it could be that you like do a thing as well. That is that is definitely an option that's open. I feel like this text is bigger than this text. Am I just losing it? Um, no, 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 no. Okay, so when you try to make amends, say what you are sorry for and roll plus grace. On a 10 plus, each of you mark one link with each other. They do not have to forgive you, but the issue is settled. They decide to forgive you or not, blah, blah, blah. The conversation is until they. Until they make amends. There we go. Because it's not strictly just like me being like, yo, I'm sorry. It can be like, I make a bento lunch for you and like put it in your mailbox. You know, like can be any form of apology that the, the players want to come up with or any form of like fence mending. <laughs> I prefer my emotions and ideas to fit into neat little taxidermies. I mean, it would be nice, wouldn't it, Alex? And yeah, I'm thinking of the fighting as being like 
this awkward spot that we can put ourselves in. And yeah, I don't want to let people spam it, right? It's like, you fucked up, and so it's like up to them. Like, you have, you have forfeited your power to fix this thing. You tried, it didn't work out. If both parties roll and miss, isn't that great? Isn't that great, Salmelo? It can never be resolved. I mean, no, so like, then then it would be up to them. They would It would go back to them, right? So it's like, I try to apologize, I fuck up, ugh, it doesn't work. You have to apologize to me, uh, it doesn't work, okay, now I have to like apologize to you again. We can be stuck in this like loop where we can never resolve this thing. Um... Okay, here's the other option, is that we make fighting with each other mechanically complex and have it be something like, when you're fighting another character, you each roll your highest stat, or pick a stat and each roll it. Um, that gives us a number between like one and three, let's say. Um, the number is how many links are like at stake in the fight. It's like the payoff. And then once we can resolve it, boom. Maybe the fight is like a clock that we have to like chip away at and progress until we can resolve it. What does, what does fighting in Sailor Moon or all these other things, what does that look like and why does it happen and where does it, where does it take us? Yeah, like, it embroiling the whole group is a fun direction for us to make this go. Um, I like this one being, like, entirely fictional, um, with no rolling, and that it, like, puts it in the remaining players' hands. So it can be, like, when A and B fight, like, C and D um, decide who they think is right. Right? In Sailor Moon, when two characters fight, they are mean to each other until one has to save the other from a monster, and then they are friends again. Right? Like, that's what fighting needs to mean. That's what fighting is. And yeah, Salmelo is bringing up a great point, right? Like, there is... They're kind of like background noise bickering, which I think in Sailor Moon, the equivalent is like Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars are always like kind of being shitty to each other. Like some characters are just kind of antagonistic with one another um, and have a lot. There's like a that's just a part of the color of their relationship. But then when characters who normally get along fight, then it's like, oh, shit, it's serious. Um, but like, how do we lend weight to those if. Like, how do we decide if it's severe? Like, what does that mean, right? In a show where one person is writing it, it's really easy to be like, oh yeah, this is a big serious fight because I'm deciding because I'm writing it and I'm in control of all the variables. So I just say, yeah, this is a big fight and this one matters the most and it's in the episode where we fight the big villain at the end. I'm like, cool, it's obviously the most important. More important than all those little, you know, little small scale fights of previous episodes. But in a role-playing game, we don't really get to... We don't have a lot of good mechanisms for deciding that. Um, unless I have some kind of, like, escalation, you know, like, mechanic. Where it's like, oh, we're about to fight the monsters. Now is the, like, worst time for you to be fighting. And you two choose to fight right now. Um, Matterick, you're asking me if something could work. And I don't see what it is. Okay, so Salmelo, with this like very specific, like we're fighting until the pivotal moment kind of thing, 
I feel like that's a playbook move. I feel like that's a special move for one character to have. Because if everyone's doing this, then it's just brutal. <laughs> right? Like, we can't have all the characters fighting. Um, I would love to have a, like, rival playbook where your story is, like, about doing that thing. Um, right? And then that way it's really controlled. We know that, you know, Sailor Mars is the firebrand who always gets in fights with the other characters. And, you know, it's like every arc, she picks a victim, right? It's like, okay, this time I'm feuding with so-and-so, right? And, like, they're just always at each other's throats and they're bickering. And then, like, they get this big payoff for resolving it. And I think with that one, it could be like, you know, every episode, like every arc, you are in conflict with someone. Um, here is your conflict track, and it's like five or ten dots that you need to fill in. And it's like you complete one of these every time you do this kind of action with that person. And then it's just about, or when they do. And then you just have to like have scenes back and forth, right? So you know, like, the equivalent or similar thing would be, like, the mortal in Monster Hearts, right? Where, like, a lot of your moves are about, like, picking someone and then always having scenes with them and doing like, lots of back and forth. Um. Sorry, and I gotta catch up with Matarik, who had a suggestion as well, so let me read through the chat here. When you are in conflict with another PC, your links with each other are locked. Neither of you can gain or spend links with each other until one of you makes amends. Yeah, I mean, that could be legit. That's definitely very punishing. This really, like, discourages people from fighting at all. Um, and I'm all about, like, encouraging people to start fights and encouraging people to finish them. Um, I, I mean, certainly we don't want them to, like, stay fighting. I agree. But if we're going to make being in a fight bad then we either have to make it so that they don't control when they get into fights so that fights can happen to them and then they're under pressure to fix it or that they are incentivized to start fights and then also incentivized to finish them in which case again we're going to have people just like fighting all the fucking time and that's not really what i want the game to be about so this one is tricky because yeah like i don't want to overly incentivize it but i don't want to make it so bad that they never do it it just needs to like serve this dramatic end which is complicated. It's like difficult to design for. So yeah, there sh should there be a move to start a fight and then an apology move to end the fight? And the role determines how bad the fight is. For every scene that the fight is active, you can get a bonus to the apology. So the players ham up the fight? Yeah, something like that. I mean, the more we talk about this, the more I'm feeling like this needs to live in a playbook and not the basic moves. Because this is like, although this is a behavior we want to see within the game, it's kind of a niche behavior. It's like, we want to see this in the game, but we want it to be controlled. And, like, we want one player to be the person doing it. Or maybe this is, like, a role that rotates around or something. But, like, we don't want everyone to be fighting everyone all the time. Um, we want adversity within the team to be really, like, focused. Yeah, like, there's an MC move that puts them in a position where they're, like, fighting... But that's very difficult to control the players in that way. So yeah, here we go. So I'm all like, looking at the source material is definitely something that happens to a variety of different types of characters. So I think trying it in a playbook is a bit weird. I mean, yeah, like limiting it to just one, but, right, like there are, there are like harmonious relationships and ones that aren't. Um, certainly in Sailor Moon, it's like really, conflict is, within the group is really, really limited to like between certain characters. But yeah, I feel like having it be an episode role that bounces around could be fun, where it's like today you're the shit disturber. Um, yeah, like, specials in the terms of, like, in terms of, like, the apocalypse world, like, sex specials and stuff like that, having, yeah, I want to have, like, a few playbook moves kind of like that, and maybe one of them is, like, how, like, something that triggers when you are fighting people, like, fighting your friends or whatever, like, how you deal with that. Although, again, 
I feel like that's not such a central like component of the fiction that we want to create. Some kind of some kind of basic move for it, like I feel like almost certainly needs to happen, but it's yeah, it's just that discomfort I have with like because as soon as you put a gun on the table, right, or like, you know, as soon as you have a shot with the gun, the audience is going to expect the gun to get fired at some point, right? So, like, by putting in a move that's about, like, when you fight with the other players, I'm saying, like, hey, get in fights with the other players. And I don't want that to take over the game. So we need to incentivize it in particular ways. So here's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to say, when you are in conflict with another PC... Well, I am typing in the wrong window. Okay, so when you are in conflict with another PC, the two of you describe how it goes down. The other players will decide who is in the right. And then a thing. I'm kind of thinking something like this, just for now. Like, I, I absolutely am behind every, what everyone's saying about, like, how, yes, we should be able to, like, fight each other and all this kind of stuff. Like, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, I believe it's important. Um, yeah, and, like, where it comes up. I mean, I know that Triss is going to start some shit on Sunday, so it would kind of be interesting to see, like, how she plays towards it. Because again, like, I'm designing all of these in a vacuum. I've never played with any of these moves. So it's really difficult for me to make, like, definitive statements about how things are going to go down. Um, and yeah, I feel like we need to, like, push these, mash these characters together despite the discomfort and have them form friendships and all that kind of stuff, right? Like, it's a very important part of being friends with people you end up coming into conflict with them yeah 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 and i think this is where i was thinking of going with it at first is that decide who was wronged right it's like establishing who the victim is is actually more important than anything else um, and then giving them power. Who was wronged? The wronged party chooses. Um, the playtest on Sunday is 10 a.m. Pacific. Yeah. Um, given that we just switched to daylight savings and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, it's all weird. But yeah, it's pretty early, but it's just like, that's the time that works. Sorry, Yumi. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I gotta like, I gotta get my shit together in this channel. So I apologize to everyone that's, there's no bot to answer the common questions. There's no, like, overlays or anything. We're going to have some of that ready for Sunday, but it's, uh, well, it's limited. I'm also trying to, like, set up a YouTube channel right now, so I'm going to do that tomorrow, hopefully. Get all my ducks in a row. I wake up at, like, noon central. I mean, that doesn't put you too far off, Yumi. It doesn't put you too far off to come see my game. Um, okay, so when you are in conflict with another PC, the two of you describe how it goes down. The other players will decide... Who was wronged? The wronged party gets to choose. Um, gain one link with a player of your choice. and instantly turn the game on.
yeah, the bots are really simple, but they can have like basic commands. And then usually what will happen is some delightful person in chat, like Alex, for example, will just like tag the command to make the bot spew the answer. So I don't, I don't have conditions in my game as it stands right now. And I don't know if I want to include conditions or not. I feel like conditions are, and to be clear, I love this game, but I feel like conditions are the worst part of it. They're the part that is like, the like softest rule, like you can, you can drop them from the game completely and hardly notice. Particularly if you're not playing one of the playbooks that like has a move explicitly about them. And it's like people, nothing about them makes you use them. They're like them being activated is strictly optional, um, which means that a lot of times they just get forgotten because people get caught up in all the other shit. Uh, and the consequences of conditions are pretty meh, you know? I mean, yes, this doesn't solve the problem, but it's a downside to fighting. You know what? You know what? I'm going to make a bold statement here and say that the best thing I can do is go into my playtest with no move for that. I said it. We're going to leave this gap, uh, and we're going to see what happens. So... I mean, again, this is just me talking from my own experience with Monster Hearts. <laughs> yeah, I think just going in with nothing and seeing the extent to which it comes up is going to be useful. And then I can leave the gap and not design around it. <laughs> Have fun with that. I mean, we'll see. Because I feel like... I feel like I'm interested in trying to force the players to choose from these moves to be like, okay, well, we don't have a move for when you do fight each other. So like, maybe this is one of you trying to get your way and the other has to suffer, you know? Um, seeing if we can work through it with the moves that exist and only if I feel a pressure to branch out, do I then branch out. And if I feel like if any of these moves are extraneous and I have like moves I don't need, I'm gonna cut them. Um, but we're going to go in with what we've got and then see see how it plays. Yeah, I mean, like, by no means is this game supposed to be done for Sunday. Good God. Um, this is, like, this just covers a, like, narrow section of it. Um, I mean, like, for all I know, I'm going to scrap all of this. I would expect that's actually very likely, given that these are like the first Apocalypse World style moves that I've ever written in my life. I'm sure I fucked it up in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, Monster Hearts uh, should be under the name Monster Hearts. All one word. My game is not on Kickstarter because it doesn't exist yet. Um, in case there's any confusion as far as that goes. Yeah, you know, and like, um, behaving as society demands can totally be a way that you deal with conflict, where you just like, you know, do the most expected and obvious thing, or just like, complain to the teacher, you know? Shit like that. So, um, <laughs> we got through it, we found it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to try running with just these moves. I think the trying to make amends move is a useful addition because um, it gives you something to do with grace that is not like <laughs> the behaving as society demands rule, which is really, uh, or move, which is really harsh. So this is like a nice side to grace. And I wanted to have a couple moves for each stat was kind of my goal. And like, you know, maybe I'll eliminate them. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, for all I know, I'm going to come to the realization that this should actually be a Blades in the Dark hack, and then I'm going to go do that. I am open to this possibility. Uh, yeah, Avery's Kickstarter is, uh, doing well. It's doing well. Um, there have been a few little hiccups along the way, but the, like, the game is great. 
and Avery is great. Some ugliness occurred that we don't need to go into. Um, follows a lot from the results of the other moves. Yeah, yeah, the idea is like, this is a place that we would end up just as like embracing suffering is a place that we might end up. Um, okay, well, this has been about like three hours of me just talking and staring at this set of moves and stuff. Um, I like this little like nascent um, team playbook idea. I mean, I think the idea of having a team playbook is really cool i'm like this is actually like something i'm excited about is this idea of like a a game piece right like a, a token of play that is shared across all the players right where we have this like meta character sheet um and i think it's fun in its potential for the like modularity of it right where we can have other options um ah the clubhouse yes yes this is important. Let's do this as my, whoops, blah. Let's do this as my last little bit that I build today. So, um, what do we want to call this? It's not, we're not going to call it the clubhouse. <laughs> Steven's already done his whole thing. Shit. All right. Um, this is like, this is your space. Uh, and we want to add that here. Your space and transcendence. Okay, so what kind of stuff can our space be? Just make sure we get the typeface correct here. Safe space, but no, no, nowhere is safe. We're not allowed to have safe spaces, Uni. A cafe where they have to dress like Lolitas for a pervy boss. We already have day job on here. I don't know what you... <laughs> Um, yeah, your house, your parents' house, secret hideout, an ancient temple, a majestic castle, an abandoned bus. I'm just gonna put like something abandoned. A star chamber. Tree fort, <laughs> so cute. A clubhouse, I'm just gonna put a clubhouse and people can, you know, that can be like your photography club or whatever from your high school. I don't know if I quite wanna go to like crystal satellite Crystal Satellite is definitely for the like more spacey playbook or the well, like team playbook. This one is still rooted in the like Sailor Moon type shit. So let's we want to make this space align with like our origins and you know and like and the obligations. It's kind of like a triangulation between the two. I feel like because the obligation speaks to like what the mundane world is, and the origin is about this like magical world. And our space, just like us, is exists between the two, right? So like, this could be our house and what's magical about it is more us. It could be a more magical space, but then we are, our mundaneness is highlighted in there, right? Because it's like, we're in the magical, like, we're in this majestic castle, but we're still dressed as like schoolgirls, right? We still look like schoolgirls, I should say. The orange is the new black team playbook. Oh God. <laughs> um, a space that belongs to the team specifically yes absolutely so this is like 
I'm not going to say like no one else can ever go there, but like mostly other people don't go there, right? In the same way that when we were looking at the, I'm in the wrong thing. Here we go. In the same way that the child, it, the child thing has a Dan, which is secret-ish and secure-ish, right? Like people come in here when it's interesting for them to come in here, right? Like when that like serves the story, but they're not like constantly walking through or whatever. Yeah, so we have like clubhouse, which is like, yeah, your after school club. So it could be in the school itself. Um, I like the idea of like a library. Um, you know, to kind of go in like a vaguely Buffy-ish direction. Space Jam. <laughs> okay, enough with the orange is the new black thing. It's throwing me off. Um, okay, so we've got our house, our parents' house. I feel like I don't need to distinguish between, between those two. So, your house. A secret hideout. An ancient temple. Uh, I keep writing words with e's instead of a's a majestic castle something abandoned a star chamber a clubhouse a library so keeping in mind that we're doing like the sailor moon vibe dormitory um so our origins can be ancient magical kingdom reincarnation of interstellar royalty Hidden Magical Kingdom. I need to change Ancient Magical Kingdom to just Ancient Kingdom. So our origin is in some Ancient Kingdom. A reincarnation of interstellar royalty. Hidden Magical Kingdom. Parallel timeline. I feel like I want to flesh out origin now that we've done a bunch of these other ones. Right? So we have the darkness origins now can inform this. So we have like travelers from a dark future coming after us, so us being um, transported from the past could be a thing. Do I have two spaces here? I do. Yeah, so we have our like star chamber, which could be like a, a you know, like a mundane telescope, but one of those ones with the like bubble and the big, you know, but still, like, an astronomy center. Yeah, could could be a star chamber. Or it could be a, some kind of magical star chamber or whatever. Transported from the past or future. Um, so we have parallel timeline and transported from the past. I want to keep it that way because then um, the villains come from the future and we come from the past. I think it's fun. A salon. It's just a living room, Alex. A barbershop. I'm, yeah, no, I don't know if I want to have it be a salon or barbershop as one of the prompts. Um, what other origins are cool? Um, oh, yeah. Embodiment of the stars. So we can just like be stars that are somehow people. Uh, cool. Let's clean up our text boxes here. Um, and then this is the text field that starts with obligations. Are we feeling good about like your house, a secret hideout, an ancient temple, a majestic castle, something abandoned? I'm gonna do a place long abandoned. star chamber, a clubhouse, a laboratory, a laboratory, and a dormitory, a dormitory and a library, dormitory and a library. So I think like a spirit animal thing doesn't quite fit with our archetype of like the celestial kingdom. Because remember, we're not trying to cover all the possible bases, we're trying to create this like set of spots
liberatory, a place where people are liberated with science, or where we study liberty. Yeah, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about this. I think this is enough. <laughs> Invariably, there will be something that they want to do that isn't on this list, but fuck it, whatever. Even if it just gets them thinking, it's done its job. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning up of text. Great. Overlooked place is good color. And in fact, yeah, Alex has it right. We need to be more general. Um, an overlooked place. Alex, you're really good at this. You should design a game. Hidden place, secret place, magic place, abandoned place, overlooked place. <laughs> a YMCA. I like the idea of just an over looked place, provided that I spell it correctly. So, a how our house, a secret hideout, an ancient temple, a majestic castle, a place long abandoned, a star chamber, an overlooked place. Um, a crossroads. Okay, we're done. You all should like support me on Patreon um, if you're so inclined. Um, you supporting me on Patreon lets me keep doing this stuff instead of, you know, starving to death. So that would be cool. And uh, at the very least, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Comedian Crow. You can follow me here on this Twitch that you are watching. Uh, I'm going to have a YouTube setup where I'm putting all of these VODs of me designing this game and of the playtest. Um, and those will also be uh, like gathered and organized on my Patreon. So like the Patreon is going to be a spot where you can go and just like see all of this material. Um, and yeah, I'm shamelessly plugging myself, but that's how you got to do it when you're an internet busker. Uh, and so we're going to be doing the playtest for this game on Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And the cast for that is myself as the MC, um, my dear friend Adam, uh, my dear friend Nadja, um, Inspector Beans, whom I have never done anything with before, but is apparently cool, and my dear friend Distracted Elf. Um, and it's going to be, uh, I don't know, we'll see. It's going to be bumpy. Uh, like, none of this is going to be right, and I'm going to have to rewrite everything and scrap it and just, like, totally rethink what I'm doing with my life as well as with this game. But that's how it goes. So I'll hopefully see you all on Sunday. Uh, and if not, there will be bots published for all this stuff, so you'll be able to watch it if you miss it. Uh, take care, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Really appreciate everyone hanging out in the chat and just like helping me mash my brain through this because it's all new to me and it's a struggle. Game design is very hard. Um, so I appreciate folks coming in and chiming in with ideas and stuff like that. Everyone was doing lots of very productive chatter today. And it was nice. So take care. Have a good night, morning, whatever. Wait, did you just appear, Trist? What? What are you doing here? You just lurking? Jeez. If I'd known Trist was watching, I would have done a better job. Bye, everyone. <laughs>